type of praise tonight. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it. No other place can you find freedom for your troubles except in the house of the Lord. You might find some answers for your health conditions at the hospital. You might find some answers for your financial situations at the bank. But there ain't no place where you can find the answers to all your problems like the house of the Lord. I'm excited about being in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm looking forward to what he has in store for us. Hey, man, if the kids would go ahead, we're going to get the Tupelo Children's Mansion jug offering at this time. <clears throat> brother Keith is going to sing us a birth happy birthday as well. We got a, a brother, Joey Gilmore. Happy birthday to him. Yeah. Amen. All right, everyone, help. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. kids gather, gathering up all that money for us not for us but the children's mansion amen see these kids and if that don't put a smile on your face I don't know what will amen if we could all stand they're going to put the names and needs up on the screen behind me we've got several names to be mentioned tonight let's keep remembering sister Markle sister Gilmore sister Sellers sister Couples sister Mullins let's keep remembering the Haley's um, Brother Haley, I believe, was here this morning, but they're not here tonight, so we need to keep remembering them. Let's keep remembering Sister Marley Wilbanks, Brother Butch Parnell, Brother Tracy Newman, Sister Wendell Wagner, Sister Marilyn Dillman, Daniel Threadgill, Sister Charlotte Smith, family, uh, the family of Don Nunley's. Uh, let's keep remembering Geneva Put, Christy Banks, Madison Miles, and Sister Rhonda Kirkman, um, special need there. We've got several names on the screen behind me besides the one that I've listed. And I know that there's probably several needs that are in this house that have been brought in that I, that I haven't mentioned, names I haven't called. But if you need prayer tonight, we can anoint you with oil and we can lay hands on you as the Word says. Lay, lay hands on them with anointing and pray. Amen. I believe the Word. I mean, it's just, if the Bible says it, I believe it. And if you want your healing, by faith, they came to Jesus and He healed them. So if you want your touch from the Lord and you want prayer, come with faith believing. We're going to take these needs to the Lord. We're going to pray not only for these needs and these names, but we're going to pray that He would move in this service tonight. God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here. Lord, we ask you that you would touch these individuals, God, their names that are listed. God, you know their situations, you know their circumstances, the needs that they face. God, the situations that they're in. God, you are sufficient to meet their needs. God, you are able, God, to supply whatever the situation may call for. We ask that you would do that, Lord, on these individuals, God, on these situations, God, that have been presented to you tonight. Lord, we give you the thanks and the praise for it. God, we ask that you would move in this service, God, and touch us, Lord, and let your will be done in this house, God. Lord, we give you the thanks. We give you the praise for it, Lord. God, we're believing by faith, God, that you're going to do the work. God, we've come with faith believing, God, that your word, Jesus, has spoken to us, God, and we're going to act upon the word, Lord, for that touch, for that miracle, for that blessing, God. Lord, we believe it in the name of Jesus, and we're going to receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If heaven's journey would be making their way up, they're going to sing us a special tonight. Let's go ahead. Let's worship with them as they sing.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Well, I can see you good now. Y'all feeling good? They, they told me to come around that way. I guess they thought I was an old man or something to get up on stage. But anyway, uh, I've had uh, three or four requests, but I'm going to go ahead and sing anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, but the pastor finally said he'd like to hear a payday, so I guess we better do that one, okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just to know the songs, but I was sitting there tonight when they started singing, there's so many prayers to pray, there's so many souls to say, we must reach them before it's too late. Folks, I want to tell you something. There's a lot more to living for God than just coming to church. We come here and gather strength, but I'm going to tell you, God takes note of everything that we do for his kingdom. You can't do something for the kingdom of God that he don't pay attention to. And one day, one day, it's going to be your payday that's going to be out of this world, literally. He is going to have record of our actions of serving him. He's going to not have record of our sins, thank God, if we've got them under the blood. But if we've done something for him, it's going to be worth it. Whatever we do in this life, whatever we do for him down here, he's going to... To live is Christ. You know what that simply means? We are to go about doing his business while we're living. But then the rest of that verse says to die is gain. That's exciting to me. I love living. I love life. I, love, I, I, I even look forward to Mondays. Amen. I like living. But I know one day the best is yet to come for me. And I want them to sing it again. I want you to think about the payday that God's going to give you one of these days. Go ahead. I love this song.
There's so many prayers to pray And so many souls to say Let us reach them Before it's too late Come on and let's go to work Our duty's never sure For there's a payday team would be making their way on up here. We're going to worship with them. I was thinking about the statement that I think Brother Josh made last Sunday when he talked about that Sunday morning church is a Saturday night decision. Right. Amen. We've made the decision to come here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Now, maybe you're, you've come just because it's the thing to do and, you know, maybe we just go to church on Sunday night. But nevertheless, you're here at church. While here, why not, why not we just go ahead and worship? Why not just go ahead and give God praise? You're already in the house of the Lord. You already made the decision to come. Let's just go ahead and make the decision to go ahead and declare the wondrous works of the Lord.
But I'm excited and looking forward to that day. Hey, man, I'm looking forward to the word of the Lord tonight. We're going to turn this service over to the pastor in just a minute. Just announcement, quick announcement to make. We have the Valentine's banquet this Thursday at 630. If you want to do that, I think this is probably the, you're cutting it close by signing up tonight. But go ahead, if you haven't signed up, sign up. That way we can get you down, get what you want to eat and get it before we can cook. But um, Valentine's this Thursday at 6.30. The men in music are going to play us a musical, and then we're going to get into the word of the Lord. Hey, Amen. I believe that he has something. I know Brother Josh and Brother Hodem has something for us tonight. Hey, Amen. If we'll open our eyes and open our ears and open our heart and accept the word of the Lord and apply it to our life, it will forever, I promise you, it will forever change you. Men in music, play some music. playing that I was thinking I told him this morning today's his birthday and uh, he is a few years older than I am but he looks a few years younger than me and it's not fair you know, it's not fair some people just don't show their age but I um, appreciate him so much and I appreciate uh, each of you for being here I appreciate all of our uh, singers that brought in the presence of God I felt the presence of God here appreciate the musicians for uh, bring usher and help and usher that in. Folks, this don't just come. What you have at church don't just happen because somebody gets together and decides it's going to happen. Somebody works at it. Somebody works at it. Somebody takes their time and puts forth their effort and their talents and lets it be used for the kingdom of God. I would like to also say that 
it does look different. Um, we have a stage that's uh, quite different from what it looked like last week, and we're getting prepared for the uh, uh, Easter drama. Uh, I'll say Brother Chad and Brother Devin's been working for a few, several days on this. Then yesterday, several of the guys got together and brought it in. That's a pretty big task. If you try to pick up one of these sections, it's, it's heavy. It's heavy. They built this thing to hold up a mass of people that's going to be in the play, and most of our masses are not lightweights. <laughs> but it's not. Uh, this thing will hold them up, and there is no shake to it, and they come in and, and set it up, and it looks great. Brother Dallas, Brother Chad come in last night, worked to 1.30 this morning putting this floor down just so it would look better than having just bare wood. They're going to do more work. They're going to do some more things to it. Uh, but I appreciate all the effort, everybody that come and work. I did not, I did not tote one of these in. In fact, I wasn't even in town. Wasn't even in town when they carried them in. But somebody brought in every one of them. And to all you guys that come and helped, I can't say how much I appreciate it. I really do. I thank you so much for your labor and your efforts to the Lord. And everybody that's done any part, I know uh, Brother, Brother Chad, I think Brother Chris even helped build some of these things as well. Uh, I mean, folks, again, everything has to be done. Somebody has to do it. And I appreciate every bit of it. I was so thrilled tonight to come out of my office just before church and see Sister Helen Sellers coming into church. It was a beautiful sight. I wanted to sing, it's a beautiful sign, happening tonight, walking into Gospel Tabernacle. <laughs> it's good to see her. I, I know that, it, you know what, it's not easy on our, our elders to always be here, but let me tell you something, and, and I say this not out of disrespect because of anything, but Sister Sellers, Sister Gilmore, Sister Will Banks, when you're at church, it makes a different atmosphere, and we appreciate you. We appreciate it. <laughs> and any of our other elders, I, I know Brother and Sister Cutshaw, they don't act like they're old. In fact, they were out here last night working. I mean, it was late. When I say late, it was probably, I don't know, I, I was coming in from the hospital and then I left to go get something to eat probably about 7.30. I don't really know. And they were still here working, working on the mailboxes. Don't you appreciate people that just give and give and give and give and give? We've got a great postal service, and it looks good. They've had some finishing, uh, or some special touches. I won't say finishing touches because they're always working on it. But we've had some special, and it looks really good. Let me just say this as well. I, I know it's very difficult. It's very difficult because, folks, if, if you've been here for three services, you've realized that there's some faces that you saw one service and you ain't seen them since. Uh, I was stopped, and I, I'm embarrassed to say this, but it's the truth. Anyway, I might as well admit to it. But I was stopped the other day by a lady, and she was explaining to me why she hadn't been able to be at church in a while, and I didn't even know she'd ever been to church. It's hard to keep up with everybody. And that's a good problem, but it's just a real problem. So if you don't have a post office box and you want a post office box or you know somebody, that we, it's not a place to, for us to have offense. It's not something to be offended. This is a blessing to our church. And so if, if there's somebody that you know that uh, counts this their home church and they need a post office box, please see, see Sister Cut, Brother Bill and Sister Cutshaw, would y'all raise y'all's hand? Those are great people. They're lovely people. They have a kind spirit. And they take care of our post office. Just simply stop by. Give them your name. Write it down for them. Give them your name, your family's name, and let them have that. And I promise you, it'll go a long way. It's not that we don't want anybody to have a post office box. It's just that, you know what? If we don't know that you, if they count this as a home church, it's hard to, I mean, we, it, it's hard to have one for them. So just, it's real simple. I, I appreciate every, this church is the great volunteerism and I'm asking now for more volunteers. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, they will be decorating for the Valentine's banquet. 
What time will y'all start decorating? Five, five o'clock, a little after five. And they've already started, but if you're available and you can come and help decorate, come on to the fellowship hall. Valentine's banquet is uh, Thursday night. And you know what? You will, I won't say you get a discount on your meal, but you will appreciate the decorations more if you've invested in them. <laughs> it works. But if the more hands makes lighter work, right? Amen. So if you can help, be here tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock. If you haven't signed up for the Valentine's banquet, you're cheating yourself. Good food, good fellowship, all for $15 per person. We must know tonight. If you're going to call me tomorrow or you're going to call somebody tomorrow, we're going up on the price. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going up again. But please, if you can at all, let them know tonight. $15 per person. Sister Tammy, raise your hand again. She is collecting money, and she's collecting money tonight because we're buying steaks, steaks, and hamburgers and chicken. But if you're wanting to come, make sure you sign up. And if you're ordering a steak, make sure you write down if you want it, how you want it cooked. You've got choices of medium or well done. When you're cooking this many steaks, we, we're not going to temperature check all those for medium rare and all that, but some medium are well done. And again, Brother Joey and Brother Keith always cooks the steaks, and I appreciate their efforts. Sister Tammy and all those others that work so much in the kitchen. Let me say in advance, uh, again, I don't know who all will be here working Thursday, making sure that everything's ready, but let me tell you in advance, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do for the Gospel Tabernacle. It truly is the greatest church in the world. It truly is. I, I've been around. I've been to several churches, and I have found nothing that compares to you folks, and I'm glad I'm a part of Gospel Tabernacle. I'm so glad that I'm here. I also want to share a good report. Sister Dillman and Sister Sonic, she's had some health issues for quite a while, and we had a scare, somewhat of a scare, just within the last couple of weeks, and they were having some tests, and today they called her, and I will just be honest with you, if I'd got a call from my doctor on Sunday, I'd have been scared to death. But he was calling with good news and a good report, and to God be the glory, we give him the praise. I would hate to face this life and the challenges thereof without having God on my side. Amen. I would hate to. I, I started to say at the very beginning, I, I'm going to uh, take care of some of these things, and I knew I'd take a little bit of time, and I didn't think I would be long-winded, but that's always dangerous to say. I'm going, though, into Deuteronomy chapter 31. We find here it was a very crucial time for the children of Israel. It's a very crucial time, and it was a time where Moses was instructed by God, you're not going to cross over. He was old. He said, I'm too old to come out and go in. I can't lead like I should do. I'm going to, we're going to change guards, so to speak. And that's a very critical time. Uh, it's, change is always scary. And I will tell you this, I don't know that I've ever preached from these verses. I've clung to these verses for my own personal self. In fact, it's been almost 10 years ago when my wife and I moved back to Corinth to become pastor here at Gospel Tabernacle, and I was scared to death. I was not, I, I will be honest with you, I, I'm still not prepared to pastor, but I knew at that point that I really didn't have any preparations. I had served as associate pastor there in Cookville, I had I served dad here before I had moved to Cookville. I had been uh, with some great men of God in my life and I had great men of God as voices in my life. But coming as pastor was a very scary thing. And I reached and found these verses. I believe God gave me these verses and I clung to them. Now, to say that, I've went back and read these verses on many times to encourage myself and to find the strength that I needed. And perhaps that may be the very thing that's going on at this point because I don't know why I was brought to these verses. I, I came here and in fact, I, when I read them, I knew these were my verses. You know, I hate to be selfish, but these were my verses. 
And then as the God began to just keep dealing with me and speaking to me, I was like, Lord, you're not wanting me to preach my verses. But he just kept on. So I'm going to preach my verses tonight. So here we have it. Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. He said unto them, I'm 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord has said unto me, thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Verse three, the Lord thy God, notice this, he will go over before thee. Just because Moses is not able to go, don't take God out of the picture. Amen. Just because Moses is not there, don't, don't remove God from the picture. He said, the Lord's going to go before thee. And he will destroy the nations from before thee. And thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee as the Lord hath said. Verse 4, and the Lord said, shall do unto them as he did to Sihon. And to Og, and we ain't got time to deal with that, but let me just tell you this. God went before the children of Israel and give utter defeat to Sihon and Og and great victory to the children of Israel, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. Verse 5, And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. This is where I really want to pay attention to. Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. If I could tell somebody tonight, I would scream it from the rooftop. I feel like I'm on the roof anyway. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. I want to talk to us tonight for just a few minutes. I said I feel like I'll be brief, but just bear with me until I feel like the Lord is done. I want to talk to us about don't let fear stop you. Fear is paralyzing. Fear has stopped a lot of people from doing a lot of things. Not knowing if I can accomplish this. Nobody likes to be a failure. Nobody likes to tuck their head and say it didn't work. My idea wasn't good enough. I didn't have the ability. Come on. I wasn't able to do that. Nobody wants to come in and say, well, I told y'all I was going to do this, but I can't. Peer pressure keeps us to where we want to accomplish everything that we set our minds to and we put our minds to this or that. And But yet so many times we're afraid to take the step because of fear. The unknown. What could happen? What might take place? What possibilities are out there. Our mind races with all different scenarios of what this could take place and how this could fall over here and how this could fall in front of us and make this happen. And we, we, Our mind torments us with things that brings about fear. Even when we go and we find ourselves in the mornings with a headache and we're like, I don't normally have headaches. And then the thing that hits us is, well, I hope it's not. Come on. I'm not the only one that has dealt with this. I'll be honest with you. My, my mother's family, my, uh, on my uh, mother's family, she has uh, seen a couple of her sisters and a brother that has died of cancer. I have had a sister, my mom's oldest daughter, that died of cancer. My mom has had cancer. Even Andrea's had some scares with things that we thought was, uh, and you know, and again, it's brought fear. And when things would crop up, all of a sudden we would have this fear. Well, I hope it's not. I hope it's not. Let me tell you something. A few years ago, a few years ago, 
My sister Anna, most of you know her. Her and her husband passed her up in the edge of Tennessee at the North Carolina and Virginia borders. And she was at a church service and she had had some, some scares that made us think that possibly she may be having some of the same issues that Mama had went through, that Andrea had went through, that Jennifer, my oldest sister, had went through, that my two aunts, three, one of them's a survivor, so three aunts total has went through. And she was having some of the same symptoms and, and, and the fear was there, but there was a man of God that spoke to her that night said, cancer's not going to harm you. Cancer's not going to harm your family anymore. I can tell you tonight, it removed the fear. Removed the fear from us. And we, we, we've had other things that's ailed us. We've had other sicknesses that's hit our lives and our families. I've gone through some serious sicknesses and, and ailments in my body, but I've not had fear of cancer. You know why? Because he said, fear not. Come on. Fear is tormentous. It creates havoc in our life. And we understand that any time there's some change that takes place, any time that there's some uh, uh, differences in the way something looks or in the difference in the way something acts or something, it brings about fear. Just to tell you the truth, I feared the reaction of what some people was going to think when they come in and saw the stage in a different, because it don't take a lot of things, it don't take very much to get some people in a tizzy. It really don't. They get fearful when something's out of the norm. They get fearful. You know, if I'd come out tonight and sit on a stool, some of you would have had a heart attack. After we put a stage in like this, and you, <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not that dumb. But you know, it brings about fear. And Joshua was about to take the helm of leading those children of Israel, and they were still going to go into the land that was promised to them. But they, he realized that fear was going to grip them because of change. And he said... Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God. Do you believe that he is God? Do you believe that he's still in control? Do you believe that he still calls the shots? Come on. Do you believe that God knows the end from the beginning? The Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. All I need to know is that God is going with me. Amen. Hear me tonight. I'm a, I don't want to be mean tonight, but I want you to get a point tonight. I want you to understand something. I determined a long time ago that I was going to sell myself out to the work of God. Amen. I didn't care. I made up my mind that I was going to serve God to the fullest of my ability. I also, please understand me, I also realized that there would be some people that would be on board and there would be some people that wouldn't be on board. But I knew that I had to answer to God. Amen. I will be accountable as a human being to my fellow man, to my brother and sister, but I am given my full life to the work and the kingdom of God. I have come this evening to stand before a group of people and tell you tonight that you know what? I believe that God is preparing us to enter into a new realm of his glory. I believe that God is preparing us to enter into a new phase of what he wants to do in our, in our families, in our community. And I've come tonight to tell the church, fear not, 
Don't be afraid because the God that we have heard, the God that has been here from the day one and the inception of this church is going before us and he's going to make a way when there seems to be no way. He's going to open the doors. He's going to defeat the enemy and come what may and come what might. I'm going to follow him and see the victory that he has for us. Fear not, be not afraid. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I keep reading to us tonight. He said, and Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage. Now you, Again, you probably don't understand. I believe and preach faith. I believe and preach God can do anything. And I sit sometimes and I wonder, Lord, when are we going to be there? When are we going to see it? And maybe again I'm preaching my verses tonight. And maybe I'm preaching to my own self, but I felt the unction of the Holy Ghost as God began to speak to me these same things again. When he said unto Joshua, he said, you be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. I've come to tell us tonight, don't let fear stop us. Don't let fear stop us. There are souls in our community that's dependent on somebody touching heaven on their behalf. There are people in our, in our families that need a church that's strong, not only strong in worship, but strong in the doctrine of holiness and strong in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And I've come tonight to tell this church, we don't have to worry. We're not backing down. We're not compromising, but we're moving forward because the God that has been with us is the same God that's going with us into this great thing, the revival that God has for us. We find just a few chapters before this, Moses had instructed the people before he got down to the place where he wasn't able to lead. But he said in chapter 20 in verse 1, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemy and you see horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. <laughs> I, I, I realize tonight, do you hear me? That it seems like the world is getting worse instead of better. It seems like there's more against the truth than there are for the truth. It seems like there are people that are more against the church than for the church. Washington is not our ally. Hollywood is not our friend. And it looks like the world is turning upside down. But I want somebody to understand when we're going into battle, it may look like there's more of them than there are us, but we don't have to be afraid. As I've said it over and over again, me and God make up a majority against any number. I don't have to be afraid because I know in the end he's gonna win. As long as I keep myself in his team, as long as I stay on his side, I'm gonna be a winner in the end. He said, don't be afraid of them. It may look like there's more of them. It may look like it's an impossibility task. It may look like there's no way to win, but I am your God. I'm your God. You understand, 40 years before the children of Israel went into possess the land of promise, 40 years before they crossed over Jordan, it had been fear that kept them 
from going in. Mom and daddy couldn't get over the fact of the ill report by the 10 spies. They couldn't get over the fact that they were counted as grasshoppers among the giants of the land of promise. And it cost them. It cost them severely because of fear they never possessed. Hear hear me tonight. I would hate to think that some of us sitting even here on our pews tonight would lose out on the revival that God has for our community would lose out on the things that God wants to do in our families, would lose out on seeing the miraculous take place in this church simply because we had fear. But let me ensure you tonight, if God be for us, it don't matter who is against us. If God be for us, who can be against us? It was Adam and Eve. They had fear that kept them from coming out and meeting God in the cool of the day. But their fear, hear me tonight, was rooted because of things in their life that should have never been. Amen. The things in their life that should not have happened brought fear. Sin was the root of their fear. Isn't it amazing how that we can look and see our own failures and shortcomings and the first thing we want to do is think that God is not going to fix it? Amen. But did God save you? Did God pull you out of the miry pit? Did God pull you out of the uh, monk of sin itself? If he did it, he can save you and he can forgive you of your shortcomings because he's chosen you. You're a chosen vessel of God and he's got a promise ahead of you. Don't let fear stop you from receiving the promise that God has for you. Don't let fear hinder you from stepping into the calling that God has for you. Don't let fear hinder you from being used in the kingdom of God because if God's ever forgiven, he's still forgiven. If God's ever delivered, he's still delivered. If God's ever made a way, he's still making a way. Don't let fear stop you from being used. Amen. Fear, it has caused a lot of people to shirk the responsibilities that God has placed upon their shoulders. Hear me, none of us are worthy but all of us can be used. The disciples were handpicked one by one, sometimes two at a time. But Jesus went through. He said, would you follow me? Would you come and go with me? Will you be with one of my disciples? Until he has 12 men. He, they followed him around. They witnessed his power. They witnessed his miracles. They witnessed what he could do, the life changes that he could make. They witnessed him even telling them, I want you to go out two by two. I want you to lay hands. I want you to cast out demons. I want you to do all the work. I want you to share. And then they get in a boat. (laughs) He's already given them instructions to carry out their lives serving him. And they get in a boat with some contrary winds and they find fear that makes them think they're going to perish. That's what the word says. Master, was their cry. Carest thou not that we perish? Amen. Jesus woke and he rebuked the winds and he looked at them and he said, Oh, ye of little faith, hear me tonight. 
God didn't call you out of the world and put you into the church for you to perish like in this condition. God didn't call you from the monk of sin and put give you the power of the Holy Ghost for you to die lost. I've come tonight to tell you, get some faith in God. Let your faith be increased. Here I'm gonna tell you, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What we need is to get rid of fear and realize that God's still on the throne and he's got it all figured out. Don't let fear stop you. Let God use you. Fear has been the hindrance of many revivals. Fear has been the hindrance of many ministries. Fear has been the hindrance of many miracles. Fear, fear, fear will get you down when nothing else will. I'm persuaded to believe that any soldier that had a stood up with faith that their God was able to deliver could have slew Goliath. But here's a problem. Every one of those soldiers that were there, every one of those soldiers that were in the army, they had already been trained and they studied the odds. <laughs> you know what happens to so many church people? We get too trained to trust God. Amen. We study the odds of how that it can't happen. But let me tell you, if God's in the formula, anything's possible. Amen. David, a stripling of a youth, was able to be used because he said, I'm not coming with skill. I'm not coming with power. I'm not coming with might, but I'm coming in one name. And that name is above every name. I wish somebody could understand. If you coming in the name of the Lord, I don't care how big your mountain is. I don't care how difficult your situation is. I don't care how impossible it may seem. If you let God use you, you can see victory. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. Please, humor me tonight. Let me use my own self as an example. I felt the call of God to preach when I was just a young boy. I thank God that I didn't have parents. I spoke with my dad about preaching when I was just a very young child, young man. But he never pressured me. He never brought it up to me. He never tried to get me to do it. He never said anything else about it. God had told him before I was born that I was going to preach, but he never tried to put me in that position. But I was fearful that I couldn't preach. I was fearful that I couldn't carry the calling that God had on my life. Let me make something real clear here. Every calling is not the pulpit. Hear me. Don't, don't, don't get mixed up. Let's put it out there and be clear. Because so many people think that if you're called of God, you've got to go to the pulpit and preach. Don't get mixed up. Please don't get mixed up with that because every calling is not to the pulpit. But I'm persuaded that God has a purpose and a calling for every one of us. For every person that has been pulled out of sin and brought into the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is a calling and a purpose for your life. And don't let fear stop you from entering into it. I will never, I, I, I will say this tonight. I had enjoyed serving God. I had already sold out to God. I had already made up my mind that I was gonna do whatever it took to live for God. And I tried to fit in in every ministry 
ministry in the church and I did this and I did that. But the night that I walked to the podium and I fulfilled the call that God had, I had fear upon me. I told him Elvis's leg never shook like my leg. But I'm gonna tell you, I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost and it overcame the fear. I wish somebody could understand. God wants you to overcome your fear and know that give he's on your side. No matter what, you can overcome. You can do it. Hear me. I believe that God's called some people to be Sunday school teachers, but you've allowed fear to dampen your calling. I believe that God's called some people to be missionaries, but you've allowed fear to keep you from stepping into that role. I believe that God's called some people to be interceders, but you've allowed fear to keep you from stepping into the realm that God's called you. I know that God's called every one of us to be soul winners. But so many of us will allow fear to keep us from witnessing. Hear me tonight. Don't let fear stop you. I can only imagine Solomon stepping into the role of being king. It had been tumultuous. His brother had wanted to be king and had tried to take over the role of being king from his father. They had had an upheaval of trouble and the brother had tried to, to overthrow dad and brother winds up dead and dad says, Solomon, you're the one that's supposed to be king. You're the one that's supposed to follow me. And he becomes, he knows he's got the anointing and he's supposed to become king. And dad calls him aside and he says, Solomon, not only are you going to be king, but God wants you. And I read to us from 1 Chronicles chapter 28. He said, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Now I'm going to tell you, that's a big task. They had been laying up gold and silver for years. They had been saving firs and they had been saving the trees, the cedars of Lebanon for years. They had been stockpiling things to build a house and all of a sudden Solomon's dad looks at him and says, you're the ones chosen. But he went on and he didn't stop there. He said, God chose you to build him a house. Be strong and do it. <laughs> Hear me this evening. Some of you have felt an unction of God in your life calling you. I want you to understand something. I want you to please understand. It needs to be God's call, not mama's call. Come on. It needs to be God's call, not buddy's call. It needs to be God's call. Not just because everybody else says it's doing its call. It better be God's call. But God's called you to do something. And let me all go ahead and go further and say this. If it's God's call, you're going to have to get your life measured up to where you can be a servant of God. Amen. Just go ahead and get the things out of your life that needs to be out of your life. Go ahead and clean up your act and serve God because if God's called you to do something, you know what you need to do? You need to be strong and do it. Just be strong and do it. You can't get there playing patty cake religion, but if you'll get dedicated and sold out to God, I don't care what he's called you to do. I don't care where he's called you to go. If he's called you to do it, you can do it. We skip down 10 verses. First Chronicles 28, verse 20. And David said to Solomon, his son, almost verbatim what we had already heard. Be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, 
nor be dismayed. Does this ring a bell to anybody? Have I read these verses before? Not in this place, but these same words. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work, the service of the house of the Lord. Can I tell somebody tonight, don't let fear stop you. You may feel inadequate. So are all of us. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. There is not a task that God can put in my life that I can't accomplish as long as he's put it in my life. Hear me. If I can push aside fear and put my trust in him, I can see the job until it's finished. It was not a big deal, even though it was a big deal. But Joshua just heard from the word of God that said to go and possess. Well, the Jordan River's out of banks. I didn't say nothing about the Jordan River. I said, go in and possess. But it's the time of year, Lord. It don't matter what time it is. It's time to obey. <laughs> but God, you remember what happened? Like, I, I don't matter what happened last time. Now is the time to go in. <laughs> come on. Hey, but God, we come up with every excuse of why we can't. And God is just saying, do it. Be strong and do it. Be strong and do it. Be strong and do it. Let God lead you and you cannot fail. Would you stand with me tonight? What would have been the difference had Adam and Eve come and fell repentant instead of allowing fear to drive them to hide? What could be the difference in your life if you would just go ahead and allow God to use you to accomplish what he's wanting to do. We want to put our desires into the call of God. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. God, I really don't want to preach. I want to. And you can fill in the blank. I tried it all. I tried it all. But that wasn't what God called me. We want to put in the blank of our fleshly desires. And God's calling us to do other things. Listen real close. I'd hate for a child to not hear about Jesus Christ and the power of the cross simply because I didn't want to deal with kids. I'd hate for a child's blood to be up on my hands because I'd rather sing than I'd teach class. I'd rather, I'd rather buckle down and obey whatever God's calling is is trying, instead of trying to put my desires first. It has nothing to do with I don't care, listen real close to this. I don't care how good you are and how talented you may be, you will never be effective until you adhere to the call that God has on your life. You will never 
be effective till you get where God wants to use you. And you may be the world's greatest in one area. You may be the most talented in one area. But if God's wanting to use you in another area, you know what happens? He'll equip you to do that just as well. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear hinder you. Don't let fear keep you grounded when God's wanting you to soar. Overcome the fear. And if I could say this one more time, be strong and do it. for the power that you enable us with. Thank you for the abilities that you put in our lives. Help us, Lord, to overcome every fear. Help us to overcome every distraction. Help us to overcome everything that would keep us from fulfilling the call that you have for us and our walk with you. Help us not to say, I can't. Help us to say, I can. Help us not to say, Lord, that's not for me. But if the nudging is there, give us the ability to walk in it and to follow through with it. God, will be careful to give you praise. For it's in the name of Jesus we ask.